Okay, so next, let's start to pare down these data sets so that they are only relevant to my study area. So I'll close the domain table, I'll go back to my map, I'll save my project, and I'll turn back on the OpenStreetMap roads and the buildings and that nice image that I downloaded. I'm gonna make this my study area. So if I start with the roads, one way I can export data is if I go under the data ribbon and you can see here, we have this tab, export features. So I'll click on this and I'm gonna make these standalone feature classes in my new file geodatabase. Now there are a couple subtle things you need to do here. Make sure you select the right file geodatabase. In this case, the Dorian damage. And I'm gonna call it study area roads. Now an important thing here too, if I go under environments, the processing extent, in this case, I'm gonna use the current display extent. That means anything inside of the sort of square rectangle of the current map, it's basically gonna you know, just take whatever's inside of that bound and then export that into the file geodatabase. And I won't change any of the other things around just to keep this straightforward. I'll hit okay. And it went pretty quick. You can see now I've got study area roads. If I turn the old roads off, turn the image off and the buildings off too, if I zoom out, you can see there's only a few roads. If I double click make it something more visible. It grabbed a little bit more than I wanted, but it's still a lot less than the whole entire thing. If I turn the original roads back on. And like I said, that should help with your performance. So if I'm happy with that, I'll turn the old roads off. And in fact, I can even take them out of the table of contents. And again, go back to my study area, which is basically, you know, something about there I had it before. And I'll do the similar process now for the, these buildings. And so what I'll do is turn things off for performance and go to my catalog, which by the way, here's another case of well, I'll right click and do um, a refresh. Now here you see the standalone feature class, study area roads. I've put those you know, they're not inside a feature data set, they're a standalone. And I'll do the same thing for the polygons. So I've highlighted the layer, data, export features. I'll select the Dorian damage file geodatabase that we've been working with. And I'll call this one study area buildings and similar thing. Now I want to make sure that my processing extent is the current display extent. Cause I'm only basically sort of biting off a chunk of this part of the map for, for what I'm doing in this lab. So everything else I'll leave as it is. I'll hit okay and let that run. And just to make sure it worked again, I can re go over here. I'll do a refresh. 
looks good. Study area buildings. It gets automatically added to the map. It uses the same color that it comes from. Um, so sometimes it's helpful to change it around a little bit if you really want to distinguish it. And if I zoom out a little bit, you know, there clearly aren't as many buildings. So now that we have finished exporting the two vector data sets, let's next work on exporting a piece of the raster data set that we downloaded previously and added to our map. Similar process like you just saw with the two vector data sets, I'm going to click on the image, highlight it in the table of contents. And then it should come up with raster in the data tab. And then within the data tab of the raster ribbon, click export raster. Now, this was a little trick I had to figure out. What I want to do is take a subset of this raster and send it in as a file geo database raster. And what I found when I tried to do that, when I just click on the output, I really couldn't, um, I couldn't like select it very easily in terms of a location. So here's a little trick that I figured out. And if someone watching this video has a better way to do it, I'm all for um, hearing about it. But the way I did it was I went over back over to catalog. I went to my file geo database where I wanted to go. I went to its properties and I grabbed under the general tab, the name, I grabbed that path. I copied it on my clipboard. And then knowing that going in, I went back to the export raster dialog and I got rid of the default. Now a thing with file geo databases, you put the full path in, then put a backslash and then for a raster, don't put any file extension on it. So what I'm doing here is and so what you can see here, I've got the full directory path to my file geo database, a backslash, and then I'm just calling it study it study area image and um, not doing anything else with it in terms of a file extension, like, you know, output format TIFF. If I was writing it to a file on the file system, I would, you can see even how that goes away. And I'll do a similar thing like I did with the vector, the clipping geometry in this case is going to be the current display extent. And you can see here, it figures out the coordinates that it's going to use for that and so forth. And that's really it. So again, though, in this case, because I want to send it out as a raster in a file geo database, you put the full path to the geo database, a, a backslash, and then the name of what you want to call the raster. And um, presumably everything else should be fine. Um, so let's hit the export button. And did it pretty quick, actually. And again, green is good. It exported it. And you can see here now that the data set has been automatically added to the map after I've done the export and I can compare the exported data set with the original image and you can see that once it finishes drawing it's only showing a raster that was the extent of the map that I set when I did the export command. All the data that I've downloaded, I've exported it, created new things, and it's all packaged up nicely in my file geo database using all of the concepts you've learned about in this video. Hi, this is Brian Tomaszewski. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and share this video. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel 
and clicking the notification icon to stay up to date on new videos from this channel. Thanks for watching.